Hey everyone, it's uh, Charlie here from Trio Smart Cal, and I've got the latest installment in the Corad saga for you. This is the new power supply that they've sent us, and what we're going to do with it is give it a, a short circuit test. We're going to give it an intermittent short circuit test. We're going to give it a full load test, and we're going to give it an intermittent full load test. And hopefully we'll be able to recreate the conditions that Dave did when he blew its predecessor up. So uh, let's get on and see how the testing goes. And by the way, um, I'm going to try and see if I can use it as a bit of an arc welder as well. OK, well the first test is a short circuit test. As a short circuit, I'm using an Agilent U1252A multimeter on the current inputs. So that's uh, pretty close to being a short circuit. And uh, we've just got the leads uh, shorted out there. So basically we're just feeding it straight into the current terminals of a multimeter. The power supply is set to um, 1 volt and 5 amps. So let's uh, turn it on and see what happens. OK, well that doesn't look too bad. We've got uh, 0.6 of a volt uh, voltage drop, as I suspect that's in the uh, these connecting leads here and, and terminals. Uh, the, there will be some resistance there. And at 5 amps we are going to get um, some millivolts showing up. We've got um, 5 amps showing over there, so it doesn't look too bad. Now we'll uh, turn it on and off rapidly and see if that does anything. Yeah, nothing really happening there. So let's now go and select uh, the maximum voltage that it's capable of providing. So I've uh, programmed memory 4 here for um, 31 volts and 5.1 amps and that's the maximum deliverable by this supply so let's turn on and see what happens oh well we're showing uh, 5.1 amps and we're showing pretty close to 5.1 amps on the display and we're showing a 600 millivolt drop through these leads which is uh, pretty much to be expected so let's just uh, flick this output on and off rapidly and see what happens. Yeah, that doesn't seem to cause any trouble either. OK, let's now try a very intermittent short circuit test. So what I'm going to do is uh, disconnect here. We can do this one-handed. There we go. And I'm going to uh, attempt to short out the uh, power supply intermittently. So let's turn the output back on again. OK, so we've got no current flow at the moment. And let's see what happens here. So I can get a, an arc here. The crocodile clip starting to look the worse for wear. You can hear the uh, relay selecting the transformer taps uh, clicking in and out there. Well, all seems to be okay. Let's just put it back up to short circuit again. That didn't seem to give it much of a problem. So anyway, that's the intermittent short circuit test, the uh, potential arc welder test, and the constant short circuit test, and all looks good. And by the way, you'll notice that the um, multimeter display is actually showing a higher reading than before. For those of you who um, worry too much about these things, what you'll find is that with a digital multimeter, when they've been carrying a high current for a period of time, the internal shunt actually warms up. And what happens when they warm up is their resistance increases and they work by using their, their voltmeter to measure the voltage across the shunt. So obviously as the shunt warms up then the voltage across it increases so the current display is actually increasing. And it's interesting though that the power supply has kept a similar level of uh, current showing all the time. So in this instance I'd be more inclined to believe the actual power supply's display than I would the multimeters. Well, I'm sure you all know what this is. It's a car headlamp bulb. 
And the reason I've got it is that actually it actually has a really good load for testing the power supply. It's got a couple of filaments in it. One is a 60 watt filament, the other is a 55 watt filament. So there's 115 watts there. And that'll give us the uh, ability to draw a bit of current out of the power supply. Now the way these bulbs are wired is that uh, there's a common there and then one terminal for each of the filaments. But if you go across uh, the two terminals that I'm not holding, that actually puts the two filaments in series. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll be applying 24 volts to this and hoping to draw somewhere around 4.5, 5 amps out of it. So uh, that's what we'll do. So let's give it a go and see what happens. Well we've wired the filaments and the bulb in series now, as you can see, and we've taken the multimeter and we've connected it so that it's actually measuring the output voltage as opposed to the current. Now we know that the current metering on the power supply is uh, pretty accurate from what we've seen already, so I don't want the shunt resistance of the multimeter actually in circuit, so we've taken that out and we'll measure the voltage. The other reason is I just wanted to show you the effect of um, the lead resistance when you're delivering a higher current to, to a load. Um, what we'll be getting on the power supply versus what we'll be seeing at the, at the bulb will be different um, due to the voltage drop actually in the leads. So let's uh, turn it on and see what happens now. This is going to right. There we go. So you can see we've got our 24 volts, we've got uh, 4.6 amps, and if we can see it we're in constant voltage mode. That's okay. We're showing uh, 23.95 at the output terminal, so that's uh, about a 50 millivolt uh, difference there from the 24 volts that we've asked for. If we just disconnect the, uh, the bulb for a second, Okay, you can see that it's uh, right by about 20 millivolts, 21 millivolts at uh, 24 volts. So you're looking at about 0.1% accuracy there, so that's not bad. I'll connect this bulb up again. You can see a slight voltage drop from when it was open circuit. And what I'll do now is I'm just going to take this lead from here and I'm going to connect it onto the headlamp bulb I'll try and do this without destroying the camera on my phone it's connected on there now if we go back and have a look on the multimeter see so you've now got uh, 23.87. So you can see there's been a, a drop of about 1 point, uh, sorry, 0 0.12 of a volt or so, and that voltage drops in the lead. And that's why if you are using power supplies and delivering uh, higher currents to a load, you want to be sure that you're getting the right voltage at your load, and then uh, measure, the, measure the voltage separately at the load as opposed to relying on what you're seeing on your power supply. Um, there's other ways of doing this called four wire techniques which uh, those of you who are into measurement will know all about it those of you who aren't um, interesting topic okay we're going to move this back again okay in the meantime the power supply has obviously been behaving itself because the bulbs stayed on we haven't uh, blown it up and the voltage has stayed stable Let's just flick it on and off a few times now. You can also see briefly there, when the power supply is first connected or turned on, we've got a constant current mode, then we've got a constant voltage mode. And that'll be when the bulb is actually pulling maximum current out of the supply, so it just says, I've had enough. I'm going to constant current and then it uh, drops back to, uh, to constant voltage which is 
would have turned over, but you can't really see that because of that board. So we're going to get that out of the way. There you go, a constant voltage. If I increase the voltage on the bulb now, um, what we'll end up doing is driving the power supply to be delivering its maximum current and we'll flip across into constant current mode at a certain voltage. So let's, let's try that. There you go, so 24. Oops. 24, 25, 6. See the current's going up. 27. 28, 29, we're in constant current mode now. 28, back down. Constant voltage mode. Constant current mode. So we're delivering uh, pretty close to our um, 5.1 amps. Now the thing's rated at 5 amps, so you've got a little bit of over range there, um, but if you want your 5 amps you're going to get it. And obviously it hasn't blown up, because we're still being blinded. Yeah. Multimeter uh, has just done an auto power off. Yep, it's all working. Let's uh, just hit the M1, M4 button because that's the uh, 31 volts, 5.1 amps. Turn that on. Yeah, all good. Yeah, nothing strange happening there. So uh, we've tried to use this power supply. Uh, well, we short circuited it. We've given it intermittent short circuit. We've tried to use it as a makeshift arc welder. We've driven it to full load. We've driven full current. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with that. We haven't managed to blow it up. We've done similar to what Dave did with the varying load conditions uh, when the one he did blew up. The interesting thing about this one is this one's got a sticker on the back that says 240 volt. Uh, the ones that we tested previously are 220. Now, we were told that they were supposed to be capable of running on 240 volts and one of the questions that we received from CORAD was what are the Australian voltages and we only received that question um, today. So I suspect that uh, we might have had um, power supplies that were designed for 220 volts and not 240 because uh, even that, that 20 volt difference uh, by the time you stick that across your uh, regulator transistors you're going to be dissipating a lot more power so the transistors aren't up to the job and they're going to go and I suspect that's what's happened. But anyway, somebody will confirm that or deny it, um, probably Corad if, uh, if they're listening to this. So Chrissy, if you're listening, um, tell us what you've done please, we'd like to know. But as far as I'm concerned, if you send us the parts, we'll modify all the supplies we've got. And uh, when we've modified them and given them a bit of a test, uh, we'll put them back on sale with a two year warranty. So uh, I'll just do this again, and I'll say this was an, an what shall we say, an enlightening video. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, it's now uh, five to eight in the evening, and there's a beer waiting for me. I'll see you, folks. All the best, and thanks for watching.